on behalf of uh, Brother Freddie and the girls, the grandchildren, the family, uh, Miss Betty Jackson, I want to thank you for your presence here today. Um, I know there are several pastors in the audience. I'm Wayne Woods, by the way. I am honored, highly honored, to be able to ask to lead this service today. Uh, I was Miss Betty's pastor for 10 years. First Baptist Alma took a chance on a young 34-year-old young man who'd never pastored a church before and uh, gave me the privilege of staying there 10 years and uh, falling in love with uh, this family, uh, along with a lot of others. But if you're a pastor here today, you know what I'm saying is in a minute is true, that you come to these circumstances, and no matter how many times you come to it, um, you always have a sense of um, holy reverence and uh, the realization that ultimately whatever words you say and you want to be faithful to say words uh, that are always true, obviously, but words that are also encouraging and even challenging. But you know, um, if you've done this very long, that it's not really my voice that needs to be heard today. It's the, it's the Spirit of God himself that needs to speak. And for that reason, I want to open our time together um, by reading uh, a couple of verses from the Old Testament and then also likewise from the New and then leading us in prayer, and then introducing uh, one of three songs that has been requested by the family today. Uh, book four, the Psalms, starts, it's a prayer of Moses, the man of God, Psalm 90. I'm not going to read all the verses, but the ones I do read will probably be very familiar to you, and I think you, uh, I hope you'll see why I, I feel drawn to them today. Lord, you've been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity, you are God. You return mankind to the dust, saying, Return, descendants of Adam. For in your sight, a thousand years are like yesterday that passes by, like a few hours of the night. Our lives last 70 years, or if we are strong, 80 years. Even the best of them are filled with struggle and sorrow. Indeed, they pass quickly, and we fly away. Therefore, teach us to number our days carefully, which I think Miss Betty understood, so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Satisfy us in the morning with your faithful love, so that we may shout with joy and be glad all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your splendor by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us, established for us, the work of our hands. And I couldn't help but think about her life and the work of her hands and how they've been established and how they've been seen and how her children and grandchildren follow in those footsteps. Establish the work of our hands. And then a passage, I don't know if I've used this one previously, but it just so powerfully spoke to me from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 says this, So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Paul says, or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in sufferings for the gospel, relying on the power of God. Now listen to this, verse 9. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Listen to this. Who has abolished death, amen, and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, apostle, and teacher, and that is what I suffer these. That is why I suffer these things. Now, here's the verse that really I wanted to open with. But I'm not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that He is able to guard what I've entrusted to Him against that day. And may God bless the reading of his word. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence here today. We'd uh, be lost without it. We thank you for your word that gives us clarity in the times when our hearts are overcome with loss and grief. And we thank you for the assured hope that is ours in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just celebrated Easter, but Lord, every time we gather together as your people, we celebrate the reality 
of the resurrection and its victory over death, hell, and the grave. And so we thank you for that today. And we pray that we would feel your presence today, especially this family, and that we would know the power of your love even through difficult times like this. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me, uh, and I'm going to try to give you a little clarity. This doesn't always happen at a service like this today, but try to give you a little clarity um, regarding uh, some of the songs uh, that are going to be used that have been chosen. They've been chosen with intention and purpose. Um, Wind Beneath My Wings will be played in just a moment. You'll be familiar with that song. Um, I would just simply say that it's intensely personal uh, with the family, particularly with her beloved husband of so many years, um, because by his own testimony, she was clearly the wind beneath his wings. And if you knew her long enough, you'd probably be willing to admit she was the wind beneath your wings as well, which we all should be for each other if we have the opportunity. Um, she was truly his soulmate, and he was hers. I don't know if I've ever seen a couple that was better linked together through all those years than, than Freddie and Betty Jackson. Um, the lyrics of this song, I, I looked them up with intention and purpose. Uh, I, I thought you might uh, like to hear some of those. You may be like me. Sometimes I hear tunes, and I remember tunes better than I do lyrics. But I, just, I thought this was appropriate before you even hear it today. It says, it must have been cold there in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine, that's your way. You always walked a step behind, so I was the one with all the glory while you were the one with all the strength. A beautiful face without a name for so long, a beautiful smile to hide the pain. Did you ever know that you're my hero and everything I would like to be? I can fly higher than an eagle, for you are the wind beneath my wings. It might have appeared to go unnoticed, but I've got it all right here in my heart. I want you to know the truth. Of course, I know it. I'd be nothing without you. Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be. And with that, remembering those lyrics, we'll ask them to play that song at this time. i 
That was Freddie's tribute song. Um, the Lord does this. I've seen this happen in, when he's about ready to call a loved one home. And he did that for Freddie the other night, too. Um, Amy was helping me remember some things and relaying some things to me. And just the other night, uh, as they were seated at the supper table, and I'm sure he did this very often, but he asked Miss Betty, Mama, do you know how much I love you? Uh, boy, what a way to go. Amen? And I'm sure she did, Brother Freddie. I'm sure she did. Um, but I think that's a great tribute to the love affair that we were able to observe with y'all all these years. I want to uh, take a few minutes now to remember some things personally about Miss Betty's life. Now, uh, most of you will be aware of the fact that she was a Ware County native by birth, at least, but she lived a good portion of her life um, in Bacon County. She was uh, born in August of 1940. Uh, to the late Rapport Henderson and Margaret Gibson Henderson. She graduated from Wake County High School in 1958. She served as the Sunshine Lady for the class of 1958. Uh, since then, uh, when she got her degree in education, she retired after spending a number of years uh, teaching fourth grade in the Bacon County school system. Um, she was co-owner and office manager for a period of time. Um, with Freddie and Marvin Dean when they began the Dean Jackson Funeral Home in Alma a few years ago. Longtime member of First Baptist Church of Alma, where she served as a Sunday school teacher for many years. And I'm just going to tell you, as a pastor, when it comes time, and I'm, this is probably a, a, one of those editorial notes that I just sort of added in, when it comes time to put together the nominating committee for the next year, that is not an easy job. And you all would agree with that, been in churches before? But you never had to worry about who was going to be the fourth grade Sunday school teacher as long as she could do it and do it right. Uh, she loved it. And, you know, most teachers sometimes say, I teach kids all day long, which she did. But she loved teaching them on Sundays as well. And uh, many of you probably were either her students in fourth grade or you were students in her Sunday school class or maybe both. And uh, I know what a blessing it was for each and every one of you. And I know there are a number of her uh, friends in the Alma Supper Club that are here today, too, and she really was blessed and enjoyed that. She came from a big family, seven total. Um, a number of them had preceded her in going home. Uh, her two sisters, Brenda Callahan and Diane Johnson, her three brothers, Willie Ray Henderson, Donald Henderson, and Wayne Henderson. Um, she is survived, of course, by her husband, Freddie Jackson, her two daughters, Tammy Jackson Tyre, and her husband, Tim, of St. Simon's and uh, Nancy Jackson Jones and her husband Chris of Williamsburg, Virginia, four, and I'm a grandpa, so I understand this, greatly loved grandchildren, uh, Abby Tyre Patton, um, Gage of Atlanta now, Camille Jones of Williamsburg, Maggie Tyre of Augusta, and Jackson Jones of Lansing, Michigan. One brother, Charlie Henderson, and Linda of Ellenwood, Georgia, and a numerous nieces, nephews, and other relatives. Um, now, all that being said, I want to talk to you a few minutes this morning, and this may sound, or this afternoon, it may sound cliche, but if it does, then so be it, okay? I'm, I'm going to connect our thoughts for a few minutes at this point of this service around three topics, faith, family, and friends, okay? And that, that you say, well, that's a preacher thing. It's not. It's just when I thought about her life, I couldn't think of anything better to try to help for a few minutes summarize her life. And first and foremost is faith. Miss Betty believed it, and more importantly, Miss Betty lived it. Uh, I don't have any doubt that one of the first things that she heard Jesus say to her just a few days ago was, Well done, good and faithful servant, Matthew 25, 21. You took the talents and the opportunities that I invested in you, and you invested them in others so that they could be multiplied. You served as I served. You followed in my example. You followed in my footsteps. Even unto the least, Jesus talks about serving. And you did that, whether it was in your classroom at school or whether it was in your classroom at church. You have been a clear example, I think Jesus would tell her, of someone who faith, whose faith and faithfulness show, and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Freddie was talking about the other night when uh, those moments just before she left this earth... Uh, they had both gone to brush their teeth and they were coming back to their sitting room area there and 
He knew something was unusual because she was moving down. She was moving into the room quicker than normal. And as she was going, she was saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But you know what he did? Because she, she sat down on the, on the love seat there. And uh, she plopped down at that point. Didn't sit down like she normally would. And she was gone. Uh, her spirit had gone to be with the Lord and her body was left behind, which is what we celebrate here today. Um, the body is a gracious gift of God and inhabits the soul, the spirit, for the period of time we're on the earth. But when this heavenly body is uh, reached its limits, uh, God takes the spirit home to be with him. And then one day this body, which we'll plant back in the earth a little bit later today will be resurrected again in the form of a new resurrection body and will be reunited with that spirit and will forever be with the Lord. Amen. Her faith was real. She was the real deal. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful I had the privilege to see that and know that. But secondly, and maybe more time spent on that, is family. And these are some comments. I had a little bit of help here. Brother Freddie, y'all may be surprised, even the girls. Uh, some of your grandchildren helped me here. Um, we, we sort of schemed a little bit against you, um, but, uh, but I hope these will be things that will really bring a smile to your face and joy to your heart. Um, most selfless lady I've ever known that came from one of her daughters, and all of us would be able to say amen. She supported her children and her grandchildren in whatever they did. She was their chief encourager and cheerleader, attended every special event that she was able to attend, they won't have any doubt about the fact that they knew that Nanny is what they called her, that they knew Nanny loved her, not just because she told them what she did, but more importantly, I think, because she showed them, both in word and in deed. She leaves, as a result, behind a legacy of faith and faithfulness of love and grace and loyalty that uh, is a gift that no amount of money could purchase. Amen? Um, and then Amy Burkett helped me a little bit, uh, Brother Freddie's niece, uh, Freddie and Betty's niece. And uh, I asked her to, I, I was telling them the other day, I really like to have some personal inputs. And so she contacted all of the grandkids and asked them to see if they could share with us some answers to three questions. What is a random thing that always reminds you of Nanny? What is a, what is a piece of advice or something funny she did or said that you think of often? And then thirdly, what do you admire most about her? And so I'm going to read them. Okay, I'm just going to share with you uh, what came from your grandchildren. Um, Abby said uh, one of the random things she, that reminds her of, her, of uh, her nanny was Lance, peanut butter, crackers, and Cokes. Amen? <laughs> Everybody that knowed her, I think, she knew her, knew that Cokes were um, not a vice, but she loved them. Amen? Um, one of the sayings that nanny often had was front and center. Y'all remember that? Yeah, you're shaking your head. Uh, and we'll talk about that in just a minute because we're going to end our service today with uh, uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. They, they remember one of the things that Miss Betty was probably not given as a gift was a sweet singing voice, but she still loved to make a joyful noise. And, and all the grandchildren loved that. And she loved to play the piano for them to sing that together. Um, sitting on the front porch, uh, I'm not sure how this fits, but half a stick of bubble gum. Probably those people that were raised in a time when everything was, and, you know, we don't want to use it too much. My wife's kind of like that even yet today. But uh, those are random things. What is a piece of advice or something funny she did that you think of often? The best advice Nanny gave me was in her own actions. Well, I've already said she was a lesson by example. She kept an impeccable house. Every single item had a place. All the way down, I love this, all the way down to the fact that the sweet tea pitcher had, pitcher had its own color and the unsweet pitcher, sweet tea pitcher had its another color. Now that's organization, amen? That's order. She took care of her people so well. Uh, she believed, as I do, that we serve a God of order, and Nanny knew that. Watching the way she used her, listen to this, Watching the, I would want my grandchildren to say this about me. Watching the way that she used her gifts to take care of her people taught me the value in making a house a home and a place for memories to be made. She put her family first and invested in the lives of those that she loved. Amen? What do you admire most about Nanny? She was a woman of God. We could stop there. Amen? I admire her faith and then her marriage. She had a saving faith and showed us what it looks like to trust God in all of life's circumstances. She set an example for all of us 
on what it means to love God and to love her husband. They were truly soulmates. Nanny was always willing to serve others. She didn't do it for credit. She just did it for the sake of other people. Amen? She knew exactly what it meant to be the hands and feet of Jesus. She was the nucleus of our whole family. She kept all people connected and was invested in the highlights of everyone's life. Camille, what about random things? Half-empty soda cans. <laughs> Japanese cherry blossom, the smell of it. I like this being as I would fit this. Uh, she never called people fat. She called them fluffy. <laughs> Can I get a witness? I don't think she ever called me fluffy, but she thought of that several times. Her word search puzzles, her Christian romance novels. What about a piece of advice? I like this. Or something funny. And two of the three grandchildren, or four grandchildren, remembered this particular instance a little bit different way. They were at Wild Adventures one time. They had a long, hot day in the middle of the park. Y'all already are laughing about it, probably. She said she was thirsty, so we offered her water, but she said she was tired of water because it had no taste. <laughs> she needed a soda. We understand that. What do you admire most about Nanny? She was our glue, very much the matriarch of our family. She's the one that remembered everyone's birthday, anniversaries, first day of classes, work, etc. All Listen, always made you feel so loved and special on your day. She showed her love by doing acts of service. She always helped others first. She was the perfect spouse to Papa. The love they had for each other radiated from them. She was always the last person to sit down during meals because she was catering to everybody else. But it usually worked out because she had a pretty quick, she was a pretty quick eater, unlike Papa. <laughs> she never said anything bad about anyone. She cared fiercely. I love that word, that way to describe it. She cared fiercely for her family. She was always a great listener. She took in everything you said. She was so, so positive and never complained. What about Maggie, the med school future, future doctor? She said, this was what she shared with us. Whenever, I love this. Whenever I pass a cop on the highway, I always think of when I went on a trip with Nanny when I first got my license. She told me to set the cruise control at 15 over and you'd be safe anytime you pass a cop. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, here's a, here's a good one too. I mean, she was, uh, she was loving and serving, but she could take control too if she needed to. Amen? She was, she was the, the consummate planner. Um, and she could take control when she needed to. So whenever she felt you'd overstayed your, your welcome, she'd pack up your things for you, ask you if you needed help loading the car. <laughs> uh, and Maggie said, I've been tempted to do the same to my guests before, but never had the guts to do it. <laughs> and then I've always admired the way she found such joy in celebrating others more than herself. Amen? I hope you... Uh, or hearing these words the way that I did and, and being blessed by what these special grandchildren shared. And then, uh, then the boy of the group, uh, Jackson. Freddie was telling me the other day that uh, uh, he was partial to the girls, but Betty was maybe a little more partial to the boy. I don't know if that's true or not, but you see. Um, this was Jackson. What is a random thing you always remind you of Nanny? I've always reminded of Nanny, and you know this is true. I think the egg house, you call it the egg house? is filled with uh, puzzles that she's put together, a, a lot of Coke puzzles through the years. But he said he was always reminded of Nanny would ever see a puzzle, no matter where I am. She loved her puzzles so much, and watching her put them together was always so much fun. Seeing the puzzles all over her house also reminds me that even though she is gone, there will always be remnants and memories of her. Amen? That's good. What about a piece of advice? <laughs> that same, it might not have been the same trip, but it was another trip to Wild Adventures. In the middle of the summer, she was hot and flustered. Mama went to go get her some water. Nanny had forgotten Mama's name for the time being. So when someone asked her about getting water, all Nanny could muster was, Oh, what's her name? <laughs> I mean, I get there sometimes. Uh, don't remember your, grand, your child's name. Everyone thought it was so funny. So whenever I personally forget someone else's name, whether it's a guy or girl, I just always say, Oh, what's her name? 
Nobody else understands it, but I get a smile out of it as a result. What do you admire most about Nanny? Nanny's the most loving person I've ever known. She would go above and beyond with just about everything she did so her family felt welcome and loved. From the little things like remembering that each grandchild liked to, what each grandchild liked to eat to giving us calls to check in on us. She knew my favorite pie, and I can uh, testify to that too, was pecan pie. So every single time we came down, there was always a homemade pecan pie waiting for me. I've eaten a lot of pecan pies that weren't made by Nanny, and none of them will ever compete with hers. She was an incredible chef. I'll never forget any of her home-cooked meals. I'm looking forward. Uh, I've looked forward to stuffing my face every breakfast, lunch, and dinner when I was in her presence. Can you see that she deeply loved, fiercely loved, that's why one, one said her family, and invested her life in you. And you have a legacy that uh, uh, has shown you how you can do the same thing with yours as you move forward. Amen? Well, faith, family, and friends. Now listen, I entered her life about th maybe almost 35 years ago, Freddie, when, uh, like I said earlier, this uh, First Baptist Alma took a chance on a young 34-year-old, and I'm sure she was with you because Freddie was uh, one of those uh, gullible people on the search team at the time who came to hear us preach in view of a call, and I'm sure Miss Betty was there with them. And um, someone, I, the thought occurred to me, she made everybody, I mean, Amy may have said this, she made everybody feel special if you knew her. I mean, you, didn't have to, you made her family members feel special, but if you knew her, she made all of us feel that way, amen? Even, even if she knew some of us longer than she knew others, she made everybody feel special and loved and important, and she did that for me. I mean... Uh, I, I, it was a, what a blessing it was to be her pastor those years, and and uh, it just I I can't tell you uh, you can understand if you're here as a friend and I'm sure you are uh, Betty Jackson you know what I'm talking about. Uh, would to God that we could have more friends like she was a friend to us. Amen. Um, that's the kind of friend that we're supposed to be to each other, and she's leaving us a great example. Family. Uh, faith, family, and friends, I think is a good way to, to summarize a life faithfully lived, um, investing our opportunities and our gifts in others and bringing glory to God in the process. The second psalm that's been chosen is uh, one of her favorites and probably as well yours. It's Beulah Land. And uh, she liked, loved to play it on the piano for all of her family uh, to sing along. Um, I, I, was, I was reading somewhere this week, uh, thinking about Beulah Land. I was reading a word by uh, a great saint of years gone by, Jonathan Edwards, that said this. And, and I, I thought about it with regards to Beulah Land, and it's, it's powerful. It says, death can only infinitely enhance our experience of the love and joy of the presence of God. Amen? So for the believer, we can only experience what we've never been experienced before to the maximum extent possible when we go to be in his presence. I've said many times before to people in services like this and other places, I really believe in the split second, Brother Freddie, that her spirit was called home to be with him. She was more. She had a wonderful life. She loved her family. She enjoyed her friends. But in the split second after she left that body, she is more fulfilled than she could ever have possibly been here on this earth. And it's all because of her relationship with Jesus that she could look forward to going home to Beulah Land. Listen to this song. So oh. 
for that country to which I never or never been before no sad goodbyes will there be spoken or time Let me take just a minute to read to you a passage from the New Testament with a couple of comments and a main thought with regards to the fact that ours as believers, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, is a living hope. And that word hope is unique in the New Testament language. It is a profound certainty. It's not anything that may or may not happen. And that's what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the way Peter describes it. And if we don't have a living hope, may I just be completely frank with you today? Then what we're doing here will bring comfort to the family, but it's really in the grand scheme of eternity somewhat of a waste of time. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's alive. That's what makes our hope alive. That's what made her hope alive. So this is what Peter says in 1 Peter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of His great mercy, He has given us new birth. We have to be born again into a living hope. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen? And, verse 4, into an inheritance that is imperishable. Everything on earth is perishable. Undefiled, everything on earth in some form or another is defiled and unfading. Everything on earth begins to fade from the moment it is in existence. And these things, this inheritance, is kept in heaven for you. Verse 5, you are being guarded by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So here's the picture. This living hope that ushers us but through the, the new birth and the power of the resurrection ushers us in, into, the, into this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ gives us an inheritance that cannot be taken away from us. And not only is it reserved for us, but we are being protected and guarded through God's power to make it to that place. That gives you great joy at a time like this. To know somebody who's past has had that kind of faith in this living hope. You rejoice in this, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials. Why? So that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which though perishable is refined by fire, may result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Though you've not seen him, you love him. Though you're not seeing him now, you believe in him. And you rejoice, I love this, with inexpressible and glorious joy because you're receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The goal of Miss Betty Jackson's faith was not just that she would live this life and be such a blessing to us, but the goal of Miss Betty Jackson's faith was at the end of this life, whenever it might come, she might, through her living hope, receive the inheritance of eternal life in the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what she's done. And I celebrate. I'm, I'm thankful for that because I, too, share that living hope, and I look forward to seeing her again. That's the confidence that we can have as Christians. Well, there's one last uh, song. Before uh, I introduce that, let me say again how much I appreciate the opportunity and privilege of being here today. And on behalf of the family, let me say to you how much I know they appreciate not only your presence here today, but so many others that have brought food and made telephone calls and certainly prayed. Um, you know, one of the things that's been so hard about COVID is that God has made us for relationships. And we've had to spend a long period of time not experiencing those relationships the way that we really are made to. And uh, maybe that's changing a little bit now, but when these kinds of circumstances happen in the lives of people that we love, friends that we have, being there is a way to express your love for them and your thankfulness for the relationship you've been given with them. Well, the last song is uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Um, and it was one, I think I mentioned already, that um, uh, Miss Betty used to enjoy singing uh, to her grandchildren when they were young. Um, even if she didn't sing it really well. She sang it with all of her heart, and that's what mattered. And uh, we uh, want to hear that, and uh, then I'll come back and we'll close in prayer and we'll be dismissed. Listen to this. Well, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Well, I'm sometime up and I'm sometime down. Coming for to carry me need to make a little bit of a correction. Is Daryl Sutton here? Where's Daryl? Daryl, would you come up just a minute? I'm going to give you an opportunity to say something because I'd forgotten it. Would you mind closing us in prayer too when you're finished? Would you feel comfortable doing that? I'll do that. All right. Yeah. Thank you. To say that I love my Aunt Betty is an understatement. And to say that she loved her family is an understatement. The Henderson family, I, oh 
for 31 years ago. She lost her mom and dad. She lost her brother, Wayne. She lost her brother, Donald. And she lost my, my brother's mama in a terrible accident. For 30 something years, she was killed down as my mama. I talked to her all the time. I got advice just like her kids did. I got a couple porch talks. Those were always interesting. But she told me the things that I needed to hear. They were always right. I followed a few of them that turned out good, and I followed a couple of them I didn't, and it didn't turn out good. So <laughs> my family, when good family members give you advice, listen, because um, it means something. But uh, one of the things that she did that I'll never forget is that I had three kids. Two of them were born when my mother died. The other was born later. And every year on their birthday, there was a card from Aunt Bailey. She gave them all a dollar for every year she was open. They never were late. And they always said, from, from love from Aunt Betty and Uncle Freddie, and remember your mama, because she didn't want them to go without having that. Because that's the way she was, she filled in, filled in for my mama. And I'm going to miss her, but I had a, I'm sorry. I woke up this morning, and I had this image in my head. And I had to share it because I know that uh, when she took her last breath, um, that the next second she was in heaven. And I had this vision of her standing around Wayne and Donald and my mama. They were all smiling and said, Thank you for loving my family. I'm going to miss her. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you all for being here today. The family is going to be making uh, the trip over to Pine Lawn in Alma. It will be a private graveside service, but thank you so much for your presence here today. Let me just urge you to keep them in your prayers. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for the blessed hope that is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thank you for a life that was so clearly lived, walking in your footsteps, that all of us were touched by it, all of us were marked by it. I want to pray again for her precious husband and daughters and grandchildren and son-in-laws and extended family. Uh, Lord, she was deeply loved because she deeply loved. And uh, may we take the legacy of her love and faithfulness and um, live it in a way that would bring glory and honor not only to her memory and the life she lived, but even more importantly to the Lord that she loved and served. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.